At FanV, we believe our smile is our business card. And our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trademark. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. Happy Monday to you all. Thank you so much for joining us for Mannequin Monday. I'm Andrew Carruthers, and I'm stoked to be here this morning because we have such an international crowd joining us. We've got our friends from MBB all the way from Spain joining us, so definitely say hi to them. And, you know, of course, we always have an international crowd, so please type into the chat where you are watching from. We love to know who's joining us. So great week of education coming up for you all. Of course, today we have Mannequin Monday coming up tomorrow, June 22nd at 8 a.m. Pacific. You also have Transformation Tuesday. Um, our friend Kailani Goodwin is going to be doing a starfish color placement. How cool. On the 23rd at 4 p.m., join me and Raymond Torregano III. We're going to be talking about the healthy hustle. I'm super stoked about this conversation because we do hear this thing like, oh, we got to hustle, we got to push, but that can also lead to burnout. And Raymond is a master at how you hustle and push without burnout. So I'm super stoked on that. Got some great promotions for you over at samvia.com this month. So don't miss that 25% off site wide. So if you do need tools, it might be a good opportunity to grab some. So let's get into the education today because we've got a lot to do. Sammy's going to bring us some killer finishing. So please welcome in the chat your good friend, my good friend. Happy Father's Day yesterday, Mr. Sam Villa. What's up, <laughs> AC, buddy? How are you, brother? I hope you're good. You had a great weekend. I don't know yes. about you, but I had a nice weekend. I made a train track. That was my goal with Mateo. We built the track and we actually had it three stories high. It was pretty cool. I mean... Kids' toys nowadays, you just can't lo so lose. Cool. And speaking of toys, I'm going to be talking about a toy that I reached in my toolbox I haven't grabbed in a long time. It's called a roller. And I'm Sweet. anxious to talk about that, Andrew. So today's all about finishing AC. Let's get going here. And once again, welcome, España, Europe. Como están? Bien? I hope everybody's good. If you're on board, MDB, just say hello. Let us know you're on board. Emma, Emma, what's up, Emma? Kelly Brown, Long Island Beauty School. Glad you're here. You're going to love today, Kelly. Uh, Mel from the Philippines. Glad you're here, my friend. I'm so happy. Sonia, what's up? Our friend Sonia, you're always here with us. Kenya Ford, thank you so much. Ronald Harriet. Where are you from, guys? Write it in there. Yeah, today I'm going to pick up these guys. This is so cool. I'm going to pick these guys up. And, you know, I never thought I would use these. All right, so let's talk about this, all right? Today's about finishing. And it's about, you know, how do we work with our finishing in today's world at the chair? Or for me right now, a lot in terms of what I do in my classes or what I do in my photo shoots. And I think this is a tool that everybody, we're starting to see a lot more, whether you're looking at Instagram, TikTok, or wherever it is that you're discovering YouTube. But I think the Velcro roller is once again being picked up and being used. So Velcro roller, why a Velcro roller? Hi, Tiffany. Hey, Teresa from Alabama, roll tide. Hey, uh, Lynn, glad you're here from Ontario, Ebony from NYC. But uh, Velcro roller, basically what this is, it's a plastic roller with Velcro on this. So when would you use this? Well, best for dry. And right now, lots of things are happening dry, which is why I really wanted to visit this tool and why I'm starting to pick it up and use it again. And then we're starting to see volume making its way back, whether the volume is moving forward or whether volume is moving out or whether it's moving back or volume. But these are great little tools in which to get volume because here's the idea, guys. One of the major complaints from clients is, Sam, my volume, it doesn't hold. It won't hold. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tricks in terms of how to make it hold. But this is really one of those tricks in regards to Mel. I'm glad you love them. Yeah, I've I've had, hey, Charles, what's up, brother? Hope you're doing good. Um, yeah, Miss Gay, yes, yeah, she would, huh, Charles? Charles Church, he and I went to beauty school, Ponce Beauty School together in San Mateo, California. And he and I, I think, are the only ones left in our class. But Miss Gale, our teacher, yeah, she would be proud of me, Charles, holding these. So why would you use these? 
it's a cool down tool. Okay, let me just say that again. It's a cool down tool. So we seem to be doing a lot of round brushes. We seem to be picking up a lot of curling irons. When we put, pick those tools up, this is a great tool to cool down. So what I'm going to do, it's also a great tool to get create smoothness. It doesn't need to be volume, guys. I'm going to talk about that. But once again, these tools that we tend to just forget about, they once in a while, they pop back out. I've already done one for you here, but now I'm going to talk about this in terms of from a blowout. How does it work? All right. So here's my goal here. And I'm going to work with you and demonstrate in the front half of the head. And this is about technique, guys. I'm going to focus on technique. So, for example, if this client comes in and it's dry and I've drawn a dry haircut and I want to go in there and I want to create some volume. Obviously, I'd probably pick up a, a thermal tool and a uh, flat iron or a curling iron. But what I want to do first is pick up my blow dryer, my round brush. But watch what I'm going to do. I think it's so important, guys, we smooth things first. When we work with things, when it's crinkled or it's got some wave, don't expect the Relco roller to get the crinkle out. So this is important. So I want you to understand that. So what do we need to be aware of first, Sam? Control is so important first. What's up? M. Bell from Kentucky. Uh, Brenda, I use these daily. Texas has high immunity and my clients love it. Their blow blowouts last longer. There's your testimonial. Brenda, excellent. Thanks for sharing, especially with humidity. Okay. Farmington Mass is on board. What about hair breakage concerns from the Velcro? All right. I'm going to talk about that. And in, in terms of that, the reason you're getting hair breakage when you put a, hell, a Velcro in is because you're not allowing this to just lay there. Okay. If I don't brush through this and I go through and I just grab this and put it on and it's like this, it does all this. Then when I go to take this off, it's a lot more difficult to take off now you're more up for breakage because what happens is you can put this in here guys and you, it can be so zigzag that see that so it's not so much that it's smooth so and you don't want to pull on this the one thing you don't want to do is do not use these as brushes and do this that's causing breakage why because see this is all zigzag they're not really laid out perfectly so when you put the hair in there if you're not pulling it on lightly lightly then what happens is you're getting it in there now you're more apt to breakage okay does this help you out brenda so no it wasn't brenda that asked me that that was uh anastasia okay anastasia so you have to remember tension is not a way that you work with velcros okay remember it's a cooling tool it allows you to cool watch i'm going to demonstrate tool that i'm going to work with i'm going to work with a tail comb okay so I'm going to work with my sectioning first. Remember, I want to get some volume here on this top area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and some key, really best practices when you're working with these Velcros or any roller. Okay. Any roller. Isn't it amazing, Andrew? Here we are setting here, but it's the way we're setting it. I think that makes things different in regards to what we're doing. And so how we're using our tools that are giving us the freshness in terms of what we're looking for. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring that down slightly. Now I'm going to work on the top area. So I'm going to look for the balance point. Let's go for a middle part. And then I'm going to show you a little technique right now in case they want to go for a side. But what's most important is this. I need to determine my sectioning. So I like to come through and section, start from the top and work my way down. So what you want to do is get the hair 80% dry. Okay. Once it's 80% dry, now you're set to come in and start maximizing your volume. Watch what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to take a roller and I'm going to place the roller right in the middle of that part. Okay. So that I know that I am not going to go any wider than this area here. The wider I go, then I'm going to lose control of my volume. So if I just place that roller right there, then I know my sectioning needs to come from here and it needs to come from there all the way back okay so this is as wide as my section is going to be and when you look at this i'm going to square her to you when we look at this it's not that wide but i think the mistake we make up on this top area is we get this so wide that the hair is jumping off now you're losing control of your volume all right i'm going to work with this area first so now if i was in the salon and i did a haircut 
Now I'm going to go in from my volume. I did a trim, did her color. Now I'm going to go in from my volume, my voluminous blow dry. Okay. So I section off what I want first. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to isolate it. Now I'm going to isolate this with an elastic that's coated. It's cloth. Okay. And the reason I'm isolating this is because I got to let this top area down and I'm not going to put this so tight that it's going to create a crease mark. See, if you stay in control, you're going to have control of your balance of volume. A lot of times when I would dry, what would happen is I'd find my balance was not proper. It could be the way I elevated the section, but sometimes it was the way that that section was pre-sectioned. It didn't have the balance to it. Now look what I've got. Now I can work with this section. Okay. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work from the front back. So now let's say, for example, she wants to part this on the side. She's going to do this or she's going to go on this side like this. Then what I want to do on this first section is I'm going to take a triangle section. Okay. So from here, I'm going to take a triangle section just from the width that I have. So I'm going to come through, take that triangle section up. Now, how far back do you go, Sam? I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay. So now there's my triangle section. Now, guys, I'm going to go slow here. Okay. So if you're thinking, well, this takes so much time in the salon. Let me just say this. If we don't take the time to set ourselves up and get the foundation correct, then it's going to start to collapse. It's not going to hold. So if you take the work, think about the details in the details in terms of how you're doing this, it's going to hold a lot better. See, now this is what I want right here. Now, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to blow dry that, but I want to see how wide, how far back I can take my triangle. See, I can bring it all the way back to here. So I'm going to take my triangle further back. So the point of my triangle is the width of the roller, not the length. That's length. This is width. That's length. This is width. So this length we've determined. Now we're determining the width, how far back I go. Did that make sense, guys? Okay. I'm going to give you every little detail today on this. Okay. Every little detail on this. Okay. So I go back. So I just went diagonal back. Now I come right where I was and go diagonal back again. Okay. And let's see if I'm further back now. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, once I've got that, take this area back. Questions. Okay. Concerns. Hey, Cadence. How are you? Okay. Yeah, Sonia, great comment there. Okay, for, so it's, uh, for the sanitary reason, they cannot need, they, the clients need their own Velcro for sanitary. Okay, Janine, great. Okay, but if after the blowout, you put the Velcro rollers in, it will give extra volume, needs to stay in 10 to 15 minutes. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do here, guys. You do not use these wet. All right, so now this is my first section. Now I'm going to come in and now I'm going to do my smoothing. So, Andrew, I'm going to turn my dryer on. I want you to watch how I'm working with this section with intent and purpose. I'm working with the vision dryer. I'm going to turn it all the way up to high and I'm going to work with high heat, high heat. Watch up, watch my mechanics. One of the things, you know, watch as Sammy's working and think back to when you had your first Velcro roller or, um, you know, wet set classes, you'll see how he's working and off, um, sorry, on base <laughs> to get that maximum volume. And that's all stuff that we learn in the foundations in hair school. That was one of the things I didn't learn in the foundations of hair school because I did an apprenticeship. And then as you know, when I first started my apprenticeship, we were doing a lot of really flat, smooth hair. And then as hair became more voluminous and people wanted me to blow dry their hair with fullness, that's when I realized like, oh, not going to hair school or not going through perms and roller sets and all that kind of stuff. That actually really you know, created a challenge for me. And Sam, the, the question is coming up pretty often. What's the difference between using the blow dryer versus doing the um, uh, Velcro roller? for the set. Okay, well, here's the thing. Remember what, let's set this up, guys, all right? Your Velcro roller is a tool for cooling down to maximize the volume, okay? 
So what I'm doing, what you understand is you can't use the, the Velcro roller on wet hair, okay? It's not meant for wet hair, it's for dry hair, number one. Number two, did you notice what I did? I smoothed it out with my round brush. Then I took a large barrel iron to enhance the heat. Now I come in with the roller. See, what of times what I do is this, Andrew. I'd use a round brush, then i twirl it like this, and I would let that sit there. Now, if I want maximum volume, I need to enhance what I just did and allow it to cool. So once I hit that with that round brush, I smooth it, then I come back with a big fat iron and I go over it really quickly. That enhances the heat. Now, once I have that, watch the Velcro roller now. What I want to do is this. This is a key now. What you don't want to do is pull this tight, put the Velcro ray out here and just put this hair right here on that and pull tight and do this. You're going to get yourself in trouble. All right. What I want to do is I want to bring that Velcro roller one revolution down. Look where I'm at. See that? See how I got the ends? Now I just let those ends just slightly bend over. And now watch my thumbs. Watch my thumbs how I keep my hands here. See, now I'm not applying a lot of tension, guys. You don't want a lot of tension. If you get a lot of tension, you're just, remember, all this is is a cooling down tool. If I use tension, you're going to have a large hard time taking the Velcro out. Now it becomes frizzy and you're wondering why. Now, remember, I'm just losing this as a cool down tool. Once I'm here, I want you to grab a clip and I want you to clip. And then now let's talk about this in terms of this. All right. So this is called the stem. That's the stem. So I want you to be aware of where is the stem on that roller? Okay, let's take a look here. Okay. So you have to be aware, where's the stem when I'm looking at this? Okay. See this, this. So this roller here is placed on base. So if I wanted to, I could have dragged this back, over directed back diagonally 45 degrees and put the roller back here. Now I'm not getting as much maximum volume. On base, off base. For those students that are watching, now you understand why it's important that we remember that. We have to remember that. This is the stem. Okay. So can you see right here, if you're looking at this, you can see this is my stem. So now if I want less volume, then that roller would be, that stem would be sitting at this angle. Okay. So I'm not getting less volume. So here's what I want you to get. The higher you lift the roller, the more volume. The more you drop your Velcro down, the less volume. Same thing with a curling iron. The higher you lift the curling iron to curl, the more volume you're going to have. The lower you lift it, the less volume you're going to have. Is this making sense? Okay. Now, my iron. I'm working with the two-in-one Marcel. All right. This is the one I'm working with. Okay. This is the iron I'm working with. It's a two-in-one Marcel. Meaning if I push this button, look what happens. It comes off and now it's a wand. And this is barrel is an inch longer so you can get longer hair in this. Now when I go back, today I'm using it as a Marcel iron. So I just snap that back on. I'm placing this on high heat for 10. I don't have any color. If I had color, I'd be going to the amber setting right there. The amber setting. Okay, I'd be going to that setting. And that's two, 392. Okay, when I go over 392, I start to affect the color molecules. Two in one Marcel iron. This is an inch and a half barrel. Remember, I'm looking for a really relaxed set here in regards to this. So that's important. All right. So now let's go through. Let's do another one. Now, notice what I'm doing. Okay. And somebody made the comment. So when you use a round brush and you blow dry, pick up a Velcro, put it in and allow it to cool that way. Remember, this is only 10, 15 minutes, guys. And if you're saying, well, that's Sam, that's taking the extra time. Excuse me. Maximum, re minimum effort for maximum impact. Maximum impact, guys. Minimum effort for maximum, guaranteed maximum impact. Now, here's a big section now. Let's take a look. Let's see. If I drop down a size, look how I need to take that section down even not so wide. See how wide that is? Okay, so let's place the roller there. So this is where that section needs to be. Is this making sense, guys? And now I work in the front. Now I'm going to blow dry my next section. See, this way, as soon as I blow dry, I set it as I go. What, that's why I'm staying in control here in terms of what I'm doing. Okay. Now let's talk about product. So Sam, could you use a product? You could use a product on this if you want. I'm going to work today. I've worked with Redkin's new volume maximizer. 
okay really just adds thickness really enhances volume and it's when you spray this you're going to get a stream of spray okay it's a stream so really good for app product application that went more towards the base now watch what i'm going to do i'm going to pick up my round brush okay i come back in and now i come in with my dryer okay once again working with the with the vision dryer Notice how I move the dryer. I don't keep the dryer stable, guys, in one area now, okay? I move it. Watch me come from behind. Watch me roll out with heat, okay? I'm warming up the section, and then when I roll it back down, it's conforming to that. One other thing I want to bring attention to is as you're watching Sammy, notice that he is not stretching the hair super tight. He's not getting a death grip on it and just really working and ripping at the hair, which is a lot of times what we see with round brushing and people just get themselves so tired out. Plus, if you overstretch the hair, it becomes less uh, full because it kind of flattens out the cuticle too much. So you can stretch hair if you want it to be super polished and smooth and more flat, but you notice he's not overstretching it with this technique because that would actually help to flatten out the hair. We're looking for volume for this. You're absolutely right, Andrew. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Watch how I'll just take the base of the iron and I'll just push it right in at that base. Hey, let me stand behind on this other side so you can see. Okay, see how I just push that iron inside? So now all I'm doing is just enhancing that slight over-directed base. I'm just enhancing that, okay? And remember, see how that? See how that's working? Look at that, okay? Now watch what I'm gonna do. See, just details. I just wanna break this down really minute into detail. Now I come in with my iron. Now I'm coming through, watch me fuse that section. Now I come through and now I manipulate the Marcel, okay? I'm gonna turn her so you can see. Okay, and, and now the ends. You can take the ends in or you can leave them out. I think a lot of times right now we're leaving them out. Okay, now once I'm here, once again, Velcro. So in Rather Me, you could pin it here. Very easy, you could pin it here. But I want to give this more support with that Velcro. So I'm going to lift that section. Now watch how I let the Velcro do the work. Okay, look how I'm, I'm down. One full revolution. And I just let that day lay, lay down. Lightly, I just push that on. And I am not going for tension. Now, once I'm here, let's give you my fingers. Watch my thumbs. Watch where I position my thumbs. Okay. Look at my thumbs inside. My index finger is outside of the section right here. Now, what that's going to do is I lightly, I'm not pulling tight, guys. I lightly roll that down. And now I'm good to go. Okay. Now, I recommend you clip these. Why? Because as I'm blow drying, you can you can bump into them secondly where do you clip sam where i never want to clip is on the stem see that i'm not clipping on the stem i'm clipping right underneath right there cool all right now we, if you say well sam i'm going to work on this side then simply take your clips and reverse them okay so i simply take my clip and i reverse it okay now by reversing it it's going to allow me to get to this side now Okay, now let's think about what do we want this side to do? What do we want that to do? Okay, I want this to have a little bit of laziness to it. So I'm not going to come through and I'm, I'm going to set it more like this. I'm not going to come through and set this horizontally. Now, if I wanted something to expand a little bit more, I'm going to set that horizontally. Okay, so when I go in, horizontal is going to build that weight. Give me some volume. Vertical is going to drop. It's going to give me a little bit more of a lived in feel to it. So I want to kind of share with you how to go in and get that. All right so watch what we're gonna do same thing now okay here now i'm not concerned about the length of the section i'm actually gonna let that length kind of drop down a little bit so here i'm more concerned about the width of the section that i'm taking turner so you can see 
Okay, so I'm concerned about the width of the section that I'm taking here. I'm not concerned about the length of the section. Does that make sense, guys? So I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Now watch what happens. Okay, first of all, think about where you're at. I'm going to work here in the back. So that gives me room to work towards the front. So I come here, take my section. Okay. Now, once I have my section, let's just isolate what I don't need. So I'm not accidentally picking it up. Really staying in control. Sam, what product have you used to go in and prep this? When you're working for volume, highly recommend working with a mousse. It's soft. It's going to give you a lot more control. Today, I'm working with Redkin's Guts 10. And I sprayed this right at that base. Now, let me give an example on this side. I cut it dry. It comes time to blow dry it. So in order for me to alter the hair, I need to get it, have some moisture to it or some product to it. Okay. So I'm going to come through and watch what I'm going to do. I know I want some volume, so I'm just going to come through, shake up my guts 10. And I just apply right there, right at that base. Okay. And what I love about this guys, you think, well, God, you can, you can over apply that Sam. No. Okay. And now watch how I'll just work this through. And this is something great from the Lindsay Olsen. You just spray right onto your comb. Okay. And now just rework this through. So it's almost like if I did something and I did a dry cut, then I could come through and I could work some of this product through. Now I have control of this. All right. So now I come through, take my section. Okay. And primarily at the base is where I applied that product. Watch the volume I'm going to get. Once again, blow dryer round brush. I'm working with our artist series round brush. I love working with this round brush. Happens to be my favorite now. I'm getting the combination of nylon, bore, and thermal. All three concepts working together. Thermal at the round base of the brush. Bore in order for me to get a little bit more quality of shine. And then th the thermal is more for detangling. So I'm getting the best of all three with this brush. What I love about it is the tension I get. Okay. Once again, be aware of where you're over directing this to, how you're blow drying. Look how that brush, I'm bringing it slightly forward. Then I want you to slow down to speed up. I want you to slow how intent I am with this section. And I'm letting the dryer and the product and the brush, all the tools, do the work for me. Now watch how once I got my base, focused on my base, zone one, now I'm going to focus on zone two. Look where I'm at. Okay. Now watch me work out to zone three. So again, we're going to stretch a little bit, but I'm not over stretching like Andrew was saying. Remember, I'm going to get a little brush. I'm going to angle that brush slightly down. Look at the angle of it. I'm not taking my dryer and putting it directly on the brush. Okay, now I see a lot of this today. Now I'm going to go cool. I hit my cool air button. Not an option, a necessity. Details. Okay, now I'm ready to release. Now watch me release this section. When you release a section to maintain what you created, take the round brush, point it towards the hair, and just continue to roll back the direction you were rolling. Now, I want you to look at that. Look at the base. Look at the volume I got at that base. Do you see that, guys? Let's move this section out of the way. So you can see that. So once again, product. It's amazing, Andrew, in terms of if we take our time, we use the product the right way, product, right choice of product, right tool. It just really shortens the time in terms of the end result and you're going to get maximum impact. Go ahead, AC. Um, just two questions that I'd love for you to, to field. And Sonia asked about, um, does volume of Velcro rollers, does it suit big faces, like long and square faces? So can you talk about, you know, how to adjust volume and stuff to face shape? Um, and then the second question is from Jaya, which is how to decide which size of roller. So maybe you can talk about like roller size, brush size. Excellent. All right. Let's go to brush first. All right. So uh, Andrew, do me a favor. Go back to Sonia's question. I want to make sure I got it right. Can you go back to that again? What was it again? 
Um, just talking about how volume works with face shape. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Let's go there first, all right? All right, volume. Here's what I'm going to give to you, Sonia, and to all the community that's out there, all right? When it comes to volume, what I want you to start to think about is hair is the fabric. The face shape, the head shape, that's your canvas. So you have to ask yourself, first of all, what's my canvas? One of the best ways that I think you can determine the canvas that you're working with is at the shampoo bowl. Do a scalp massage, but what you're really doing, or even at the chair before you take them to shampoo bowl, do a scalp massage, but what you're really doing is feeling the head shape. That's going to tell you where you don't need volume. That's going to tell you where you do need volume. Does that make sense, Sonia? Okay. So for example, for me, if you looked at my head shape, I'm very narrow here. I'm very flat. So you need, no, I need volume there. If you look at people that are narrow, if they have a very narrow, long, elongated face shape, then you know the strongest line, look how I'm just letting that fall, see that? Don't pull so tight. Then you know that the strongest line that you see is width, if, if, it's, if it's volume, if they have a wide face. Then what you need to do, look how I put my fingers, where I put my fingers, look how that dropped down, okay? Then what you need to do is you think the opposite line. So if the strongest face shape that I see is wide and I, the strongest line is this, then I immediately think this. So can they have volume? If you're going to give volume, you need to place volume in the proper place. So number one, elongate the length, make sure it's long. Number two, place the volume down here, not at its widest point. Is that helping out, Sonia? Okay. So now, for example, if I have a short face, if it's this, meaning that there's hardly any forehead, okay? Now what I want to do is elongate. So if the strongest lines I see are this, then I know I need to do this. Now I want to elongate, so I want more volume up on the top and maybe a small amount of volume here, but not maximum. Does that make sense? You see, place volume where you need to elongate or where you need to wide, take away. Let me give you an example. Okay, if I want volume here, listen to this, listen to this guys. If I want volume, let's go here. If I want volume here, then I need to take away from an area and place more there. So sink this area in, stop taking your round brushes underneath at the nape, put them on top, sink this in, makes this look fatter. Did that make sense, guys? So you see, I took volume away here and I put maximized it here. Did you get that? If you're learning something, put L in here, put L. I need to see, I need to see, put an L, okay? So that's important, guys. You have to understand that, that volume is great, but the client, does a client understand when they say, I want, I want a full shape, I want a full finish, Sam, but do they understand where they need volume? That's where we come in. That's where we help them and make them understand why behind it. Well, Sam, I don't know how to tell a face shape. I have problems with that. Are you ready? Never fear Sam is here. Take the hair, pull it back into a ponytail, okay? Pull it back into a clear, clean silk ponytail, smooth. Once you have that, go look at them, have them up close in the mirror. Now take a dry erase marker. Listen to me, a dry erase marker. Now. Follow the shape of their face. And then when you're done, you'll see where it's wide, where it's narrow. And when you do that, guys, they're going, what are you doing? I go, I'm tracing the shape of your face so we can talk about it. They're going to go, oh my gosh, no one's ever done this. You talk about an experience, AC, that's an experience. See, that's how you get people to, to how you get clients to win them over to do what you want. Okay, I want to show you another little trick here with a Velcro now. This season, I think you're going to start to hear do this. It's going to start to kind of come back in here. Back in the 80s, this little area here used to kind of like go back. So here's a cool way to do that. I've already applied my Redkins Guts 10. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do once I'm here. Okay, now I'm going to take my round brush. Okay, and once again, I'm choosing to work with the round brush that I like at the moment, which is the Artist Series. It's just a great brush. Now look at my elbow drop down and look where I'm placing my brush. Okay. Now, once I have my brush placed, you see how controlled it is by sectioning, pre-section, you're going to have so much more control. Okay. What I, what I also like, Andrew, about pre-sectioning is that I'm not messing up everything that I did. 
What I love about using the Velcros is I'm not messing up everything else that I put in. Okay? Just a great way to do it. What I'm digging too about the Velcro rollers is that, you know, we used to do this with multiple round brushes and it's probably a lot less expensive to have a handful of Velcro rollers sitting around, you know, do your blow dry and then to do the set instead of, you know, having to wrap a you know, round brush down and let that sit with a handle sticking out and then another round brush with a handle sticking out. The Velcro rollers are so much smaller, easier, less expensive, such a great option. See, it's not so much like I, you know, you have to work so much, guys, in that. Remember, that blow dry part right there, that's to just get that section nice and smooth. Once I got that section nice and smooth, now I'm going to come in and apply my heat. Okay? There, what we need to do is alter the hydrogen bonds. Now, whether the hair is wet or dry, if I take a hot, to, if I get it hot, I open up the doors. Those hydrogen bonds, the doors open. If I get the hair wet, those hydrogen bonds, the doors open. So now if I dry the hair, the hydrogen bonds, they cool down. Now, if I take heat to it, they open. But if I let it cool down, then they close back down. Does that make sense, guys? You see? So you have to understand, you know, in order for me to manipulate the hair the way that I want the hair manipulated, I need to have a little bit of moisture. I've seen too many people take hair when it's dry. After they dry cut, they just take an iron to it and try to go through and change it. A curling iron, yeah, that's direct heat. You're going to open it. But what I want you to remember is allow that to cool down. Okay, that's so important to allow that to cool down. Now, once I've got that, once again, most cases in the salon, you might let that sit there. I want you to remember the weight of that as it's cooling, it is stretching. So maximum impact, simply take the Velcro roller, okay, very gently. I'm not using it as a brush, just place it in. I'm about one revolution away. Now I just come through and I just lightly place that on. Now come through. Now watch my fingers work. Look how I come through. Look at my index fingers on the outside of my thumb. That way I keep that hair exactly where I need it. Okay. All right. Now you allow that to cool. Okay. When I let it cool, I like to work with Fashion Work 12. Okay. 12 times stronger than water. One of the more light weight sprays to work with. Now just give it a spray. Okay. And I'm just going to do this side for the sake of time. Take you back because there are a couple other things I want to show you with that. All right, so let's just take a look at this, Andrew, in terms of this with the Velcro roller. We talked about, you know, the placement of the Velcro roller. What I want you to be aware of is the width of this, okay? That's the, excuse me, that's the length, okay? That's the length right there. So how long or how, excuse me, how wide is my section, okay? I need to be aware of that, how wide my section is, okay? When I take a look at this, this is the length. This is how wide that section is. That makes sense? Okay, I'm gonna bring it up close so you can see. That's wide, this is length. The length of my section, see that? That determines the width of this section. Everybody with me? Okay. How much hair I take, that's determined by the width of the section here. So you got length, width. So now once I put this section down, that's how much hair I'm going to take. Next thing is, do I over direct back? Does the stem sit like this? Does the stem sit over? Be aware of where's the stem sitting. The way that the stem flows, look here. The way that the stem moves, that's the direction the hair is going to move. So be aware of that. Where you clip, do not clip on the stem. You want to clip somewhere towards the base. I highly recommend clipping them as you're blow drying. Helps you to get more control out of that. All right. So now I want you to wrap lightly. Don't pull on these. Remember, the more you pull, the tighter you wrap something, then what's going to happen is you're going to get more of the hair deep into it. It's going to be a lot more difficult to take out. Okay. Hold on, guys. Okay. So you got to be aware of how, how you're, tight you're pulling this because that makes a big difference in regards to that. Uh, okay, let's see. You know, uh, let's see. These get stuck in the hair, guys, and so do round brushes. 
So don't panic if it gets stuck in the hair. The reason being is getting something's getting stuck is because it's not laid on the brush smoothly and it's got a little pattern of wiggle waggle on it. That's why it gets stuck. Okay. All right. Are you using Iron Shape 11? Judy, I love using my Iron Shape 11. I use my Iron Shape 11. Here we go. Where is my Iron Shape 11? Here we go. Okay. My Iron Shape 11, this is a thermal heat protector. I use it on my irons, but I've used, uh, on this one, I used Iron Shape, I used, let's see, I used Guts 10, One United, and Iron Shape 11, okay? What do you mean, Sam? Well, Iron Shape 11, spray it onto the section before you hit it with your thermal tool. Maybe that's what you mean, I should have been using it with the iron, okay? Andrew, please ask my question you didn't answer about how to decide which size roller to use. Ah, Jaya, thank you. All right, let's talk about that, okay? Now, great question you're asking, okay? The reason, another reason why people get these things stuck in hair is because they are using too small of a roller. You're using too small of a roller on too much length. Now you got too many revolutions. Well, Sam, hold on now. Does, remember, does that affect the size of the curl? The size of the curl can be affected, but more, more importantly, what I want you to aware of you, it's the wiggle waggle is why it gets stuck. So the more revolutions, let's do it back here. The more revolution, oh, we'll do it on this side. Okay. See if I've got, uh, yeah. Okay. So now the more revolutions I put in this, okay. Then the more that's going to probably get stuck. That's what I want you to know. Okay. So the size of roller plays a big one. Remember, if I want something straighter, use a big roller, okay? Look what I got, but watch the volume I'm gonna get out of this, okay? Watch the curl I'll get here compared to up there, okay? Yet, second thing you need to be aware of, Jaya, is if you use a small one on a lot of long hair, then you're gonna get more stuck into it. So the size makes a difference, but what's the priority? Long hair, short hair? I can use these on short hair, I could probably use that as long as I get a one revolution on short hair, but the size of the roller will depend upon the length in a positive way and a negative way. You need to be aware of that. Hope that answers that for Jaya, okay? For sure. And, uh, and since you're talking about roller size and everything, uh, um, we had one more question from Kenya Ford that kind of goes to the same thing. What if the hair is very dense? Will I still take the amount of width based on the width of the tool? Yes, remember, the Velcro roller is not going to create the curl. The Velcro roller is a tool that allows the undulation that you created for it to cool down. It's a control tool. That's how I look at Velcro rollers, okay, as a control tool, okay? Is uh, I want to talk about the, the Iron Shape 11. Iron Shape 11, don't spray it on before you put on the Velcro, okay? Get that hair nice and smooth and dry. If I'm gonna put anything on, maybe I might have a little bit of oil in my hands, but that's about it. Remember, if I use Iron Shape 11, yeah, you're gonna get tack, it's gonna get stuck, okay? Is volume only set in the top and sides? Is a good rule of thumb, no volume under the parietal ridge. Ebony, if you wanna maximize volume up here, I wouldn't put volume down in this area. Remember, decrease here, maximizes volume here. Does that make sense, guys? You gotta get this. You, you, you just really have to understand that. Watch, if I put a round brush underneath this and blow dry this out like that, you made this volume. Now, watch my hand. Look how flat that is, but watch my hand. But if I put the round brush on top of the section and sink that in, now look at my hand. You see, now it has, it, it protrudes more. But if I do this, now these two things are equal, there's no volume. But now I, if I do this, now I have to work twice as hard to get this volume. Did that make sense? Put a capital S if that made sense. I don't know if I can explain it any better. So you got to do that. Well explained, actually. And I think you're right. It's all about that silhouette. And it's like, well, if you want this to look big, then this has to look small, right? Yes, absolutely right. Now, I want to talk. Listen to this, Andrew. Okay, because people are getting caught up on the size of the roller. If the hair is wet, the size of the roller is really going to matter. So if I use a small perm rod, and I set it on wet hair, you're gonna get that size of curl. If you use a large perm rod and you put it on wet hair, you're gonna get that size. Now with Velcros, that doesn't normally work. 
Are you with me on that? Why? Because the air is not wet. So if you're saying, okay, I've used a big section. I'm afraid this curl is going to fall out at the ends. Well, then don't pick up the big one. I want you to pick up a little one, put it here. Okay. And now lightly roll that. So what's going to happen here? You're going to get more curl on the end than you will on the stem. Did that make sense, girl, guys? So it just depends about, do I want a little bit more of a smoothness? Do I want more curl on the ends? Uh, do I need more hold? But remember, dry, not wet. Is that help, helping out? Okay. Yes, Jaya, aha moments, right? Yes, good. I'm glad you got it. Okay, Jessica, mind blown. I mean, amazing. Now watch this. So this has been about 10 minutes, let's say. I'll come to my big one up there, but watch this. Okay, now here's what you take this out. Watch this. What I want you to do is clear the back. See it. What do you mean? When you take these out, sometimes this back hair is attached to that. And if it's on base, the base gets stuck to it. So release the roller first like this. Release everything. Now come in and now just start to unroll your roller. Okay, now as you unroll it, grab it and encourage it. Look at that. See how smooth that is, guys? See, what I'm trying to help you with is enhance your round brush. So I want a round brush finish, but I want it really smooth without overworking my arms and my shoulders. Hello? Okay. Round, Velcro rollers. And not only that, but Velcro rollers. Can you imagine? I could do this round brush. Boom. Put the roller in, round brush. Put the Velcro in, round brush. Put, now I can go start to get, get another client. Come back. Boom. Come back. Take this out. Hand shoot. Go. You off. Now my next client. You see where I'm going here, guys? And not only that, but yeah, you're right. Take a look. Uh, uh, take a look at the shine. That's that's important. Okay. Tips for taking them out. Remember, the biggest tip I'm giving. Watch this. See. Let's say, for example, take the clip out. Before, don't just take this and start to unravel it. What I want you to do is make sure there's no hair caught underneath. Make sure there's no hair caught on this side. Now, un, un take it out. Just unravel it. Okay. And now enhance it. Just enhance it. Okay. Look at the bounce I got out of that. Okay. Now let's take a look at the top. Okay. And then I just want you to see this set. Okay. This is a smaller one. Let's take a look at the smaller one. Now look at, see how that's sitting. So don't lift this up. Look at what's happening. So what I want you to do is make sure you come underneath, slide your finger underneath, get all the hair that might be stuck to that. Get it out. Then I want you up here, any hair that's stuck to that, get it out. Now grab and unroll and you get a nice clean unrolling. Sam, if I don't do that, what happens? Then you're going to get the Velcro stuck to all the hair. Now it's starting to get frizzy. Now it's starting to get frizzy on the ends and you're wondering why. It's because of the way you're taking it out. Is this helping you guys out? Okay. All right, Ida. Good, good. Yeah, dry, not wet, please. Yeah, that's important. Okay. That's why 80% dry, get it dry. Now, rest of the time, section it. Now, round brush. Now, Velcro. So this, I'm talking about dry setting, guys, to maximize your dry setting for maximum impact. Here we go. Here's another one. Look at this. See, if I pick this up, watch, let's just make a mistake. Watch. If I pick this up, can you see I'm picking up the back? Look at that. See it? Now that's going to get frizzy. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's no hair attached to this. So see, I take my pinky and I just pull everything back that doesn't belong there. Now, once I'm there, place your hand here, take the clip out and now unroll and you're set to go. See, see how I'm not getting that frizzy frizziness. If you don't do that, you're going to get it frizzy. Okay. All right. Very good education. Oh, God. thank you. Thank you. TikTok recipes around <laughs> TikTok recipes around the world. Okay. Welcome to my cooking show, I guess. All right. So now that was technique. Now let's go to finish. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you another thing over here on this one. All right. And then we're going to start to put some closure, having some fun today. All right. So here we go. Let's take these out. Okay. Now of these Velcro sets, you know, there's three sizes, small, medium, and large. See, I'm taking it out. See, I'm looking for everything, making sure I'm clear there. Taking my clip. The, these, this set comes with, came with the set of uh, clips. So it came with that set of clips. Okay. See, I use my hands, use your hands and enhance it. Okay. Excellent. 
Okay, let's go to the, the other one. So I like to work from that bottom up. Okay, making sure there's nothing there connected to that. See, I put my finger there. Okay, nothing connected to that other side. And roll. Okay, let's go here. Clip, release the clip. Lift the roller up. Make sure that base is clear. If it's not clear, run your finger down it. Let me give you a view of what I'm doing. Okay, now this is so that you don't get frizzy. Run that finger down there. Okay, now come through and, and unravel. Don't use the brush, Sam, to brush it. Okay, good. All right, let's go down here. Take the clip, release the clip. Lift off the base. Okay, make sure I got all that hair off that base. Okay, good. Now come through and unravel. Good. All right, here, once again, release. Any hair up here, release it. Okay, any hair down below, release it. Now unravel. Yeah. Okay. And then I think how you comb these out and how you move them around is key too. Watch. Look at this. See that? See that base? See, I'm pulling on that. I want to get you closer. You can see. It's so important to me you see everything, Andrew. See that? Look at that. See that? So what do you need to do, Sam? All I need to do is get that calm. See, I calm that down before I release. Okay. That's where you belong. Then anything that doesn't belong there, get it off. Okay. Now I'm ready. Now watch. Now I just un unravel and hand and good to go okay go to another one here see when you release this this could get to the velcro so be aware where you're at take that off make sure there's nothing there lift off my base look at see that base see how that picked that up just get that off be aware where you're at okay good see hey, one Sammy, of the other oh sorry I'm sorry. Uh, One of the habits I have, Andrew, is I try brushing with these as I take it out. Sorry, buddy. Go ahead. I was just, um, another great question from Sonia. Uh, Sonia is asking on the sides, can we put the Velcro rollers horizontally instead of vertical? Yes, you can put them ver horizontally. I find, Sonia, when I place them horizontal, I get too much of a set. I want to, if you notice on both these mannequins, I placed them vertical. Why? Because I get a little bit more of that relaxed live-ins feel to it. Okay, but horizontal. Okay, I would suggest you practice putting some in horizontal, practice putting some in vertical so that you can see the difference. Uh, let's see. I'm so, uh, there was a, uh, something there. I'm so glad that you're not assuming that the stylists know this information, basics are everything. Ken, yeah. You know what? Basics are our foundation. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate that. For those of you who are the same way, well, I don't need to know this. Listen, I always said, I don't need to know these. I don't need these. Well, guess what? I pulled them out and thought, okay, I better learn back. I, bet I need to get back into these and learn these. Why? Things change. So here's what I want to tell you. Don't ever, I, I have an attitude where I like to say, don't ever learn anything. Learn everything you can because you never know when you're going to need it. And when you learn something, you'll discover ways of how it works for you or ways that you're going to use it. That will come with practice and with time. But what I'm trying to say to you is that you have to understand that things come back. And when they come back, fashion is just a repetition of the old and the new. And when things come back, they come back with a little different flavor to it, a little bit different attitude to it. So you have a choice. You can keep doing things the way you want, or pretty soon another client's going to come in and say, you know what, can I get a lot of volume? And by the way, my girlfriend said that her stylist used Velcro rollers and it really helped the volume to stay. There you go. So it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the person that's sitting in the chair. The more tools I have available to me to get to the end result, the easier it's going to make my job. All right. Now, first things, let's go now for the, the uh, comb out. I'm going to get her as high so you can see her. Okay, there we go. Okay, now head back. So I'm just going to ask her to tilt her head back. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to use hairspray. Okay, And I'm going to work with my Redken Fashion Work 12. All right, so now spraying hair, number one, spray with the grain. Look how I'm spraying down with the grain. So I'm spraying down with the grain of the hair, down with the grain of the hair. In other words, I'm not spraying it like this up with the grain of the hair. I spray down with it. Okay. Okay, now watch, watch the how I'm going to show you a couple different ways, you know, in terms of how do you get maximize these things that we're seeing. Okay, now watch. Now from here, 
Don't get over aggressive with a brush unless you're looking for a wave movement. Okay. So what I want is I want this to kind of, okay, I need to sit still. All I want is I just want this to kind of have a real natural kind of feel to it, especially after what I did with the, the rollers and with my round brush and with a big one and a half inch Marcel. I just want this to work on its own. Now watch the pop that I'm going to get out of this in terms of when I bring her head up. Okay. Look at the, see, see the pop and the volume that I'm getting out of that. I think that's important. Uh, really like this. Looks like this is a good one to catch. Backs, back, basics always worth uh, revisiting. Surely, don't forget, this will be back on YouTube, so you can go back and look at it anytime. Okay. Now, see, see where I'm at now. Now, see, I could go side, but look at how I've got that volume. But basically, just from that. So, a round brush, you're going to work twice as hard to get this with a round brush. But if you go in with a round brush. And then follow it up with a Velcro to enhance that. It's going to be so much better. All right. Now I'm going to bring this down and just show you a couple of little things here. All right. Now, if I want to really enhance this volume, I think one of the best kept secrets is to go in there and create chaos, if you will, positive chaos at the base. And the way that you're going to create that chaos is by picking up a Samvia texture iron. Okay. So a lot of people will go in and back comb, but what I want is I want this area here to just pick up. See that? I want that to pick up. And I think you're going to start to see this on high sides. Everybody's talking about a middle part. Well, I think middle parts are great, but the next natural progression is a side part. But what's going to happen with side parts? Side parts are going to get high. They're going to go really high side parts, and you're going to start to see that. Maybe this summer or next spring you'll see it, but you will see it coming down the pipe. Okay? So I'm going to just take a little section, stay away from the hairline right here okay see that so look at this section i took now i'm going to come through and with the texture iron which is just a it changes and alters the texture of the hair people call it some people call it mini creeping i watch what i'm gonna do i'm gonna compress but i'm gonna bend this season see what i just did see now look what i did see that so now once i've got that now i'm gonna come through and now I'm going to brush that through and now watch that sense of volume that I'm going to get just from that. But you're not going to be able to see, you won't see that. Okay. And I haven't gone in and I haven't back home that or anything guys in terms of that, but you just get this sense of high volume there. And that's from that, just using the texture iron to go and increase that, uh, create that volume. All right. Next thing now on something like this, okay, see this, this is where you're seeing this volume start to make its way forward. Okay, so let's put you there. Oh, voluminous one. Okay. I haven't even really used hair, a lot of hairspray on that. Okay. Here, this one. Okay. You're seeing a lot of volume make its way forward. You're seeing this kind of idea to that. Okay. Do this. What I'm going to recommend is look at the top right here. When you're working with this and you want that kind of volume, determine your section, just like we've been doing, and make it wider from maybe the corner eye, corner of the eye. Then I want you to take, pretend this is a round brush. This is a round brush. I want you to push the br round brush at an angle like this and blow dry like this. So your round brush goes in this angle. Okay. Then I want you to come in like this. Then I want you to come back this way. Then I want you to come back and go this way direction. So the round brush is like this and you're blow drying. So what I want you to do is continue to X, continue to X your brush pattern. So now the next one, your brush goes here, next one there, next one there, next one there. What you've done is you created this X, X in the center. So what you've done is you created chaos in the center by simply taking your brush. Watch this. Stay with me guys. Okay. This top and bring her head down so you can see. So I go one direction this way, okay? Rectangle section, one direction this way. Now just take a diagonal. So Sam, you're re-blow drying some of what you picked up, yes. But what you're re-blow drying is the center, that X. So now I go this direction. Now I go this direction. Now this direction, this direction, that direction. So it maximizes that volume in the center. Now, when we come in and we do this, that volume will just pop up in that center. Does that help out guys to figure out how they're going through and that get it? They're getting that volume through there. OK, 
okay? Lastly, when you spray these things, guys, spray. Look at me hold, watch me hold. See how I hold? And now I come in and I release, okay? But I let that spray work for me in terms of when I use it, I let it work for me. You can see there's that high side part starting to happen right there. All right, AC, uh, any questions that I missed, buddy, or anything? I think we hit most of them, buddy. Um, talked about the sizes of the rollers and different effects. One of my big takeaways is that you were talking about the fact that what we set with, the roller that we set with, doesn't actually affect the curl pattern like it does when we're blow drying wet or putting a curling iron into the hair. That was a huge aha moment for me. Yeah, I think a lot, what my ma main message today, Andrew, was this is a tool that helps save you to maximize the volume. Because mm -hmm. when you use all that round brush tricks and all that stuff, and if you just let it sit there, you know and I know gravity takes over. So what all it does is takes a moment just to pick up a round brush and just, excuse me, a Velcro, put it on that section. Now you're gonna maximize the volume on that. And then not only that, but a client sees that, they're like, wow, I could do that at home? Yeah, just hit your hair really fast with a flat iron. Listen to this one, with a flat iron, just run it through. Now roll it up with a Velcro, you got heat, Hair shaft is heat. Now it's cooling down on a round surface. Did that make sense, guys? So yeah. you see now what I would do then is I'd Velcro, I would uh, retail the Velcro rollers in the salon. Another new added tool, you know? All right, guys, I'm going to leave you over to Andrew. Andrew, always a pleasure, my friend. And once again, guys, sometimes, guys, it's just about the basics. It's about getting back to the foundation. It's about finding the simplicity. Let's get back into simplicity and watch your success continue to grow behind the chair. Love you, brother. Talk to you Love soon. You too, Thanks. Uh, what a great show. And like you said, it's all about going back to foundations and basics. And I loved seeing the comments coming in from you all that really confirmed that returning to those foundations is so essential. So again, we've got lots more education coming up for you this week. Don't miss tomorrow for Transformation Tuesday. We have Kailani Goodwin. Uh, she's a Sambia ambassador, Mizani artist, and co-founder of the Textbook Collective. She's going to be teaching us a starfish color placement. And then on the 23rd at 4 p.m. Pacific, join me and my good friend Raymond Torregano III. He is the creator of the Tribe Membership, which is an online academy. And he's going to be teaching us how to do the health hustle because we keep hearing that message we have to hustle but we got to do it in a healthy way so thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you tomorrow for transformation tuesday and then wednesday for wellness wednesday have a great week